What's going on guys, Alex and Mr. Stretch here, and welcome to the Friday Ramble. This is a video series where I just ramble on about topics for some time. If you guys want to ask any questions that I could feature in an upcoming rambling video, two things you can do. Send me a Twitter DM and or just tweet me. Or number two, leave a comment down in this video if you guys want to be featured in an upcoming video. So the first thing I want to talk about today is E3. It's coming up. I've looked through some of the stuff and I really hope that this isn't one of the years that we have one of those disasters. Sort of like, you know, like the Connectimals from I believe it's like 2010. The PS3 or Xbox 360, one of the two from a couple of years back. Uh, the Wii Fit Board with Reggie fils all those things. But I, I think I'll just be happy to look into it, because I really enjoy E3, and I've had a lot of you do as well. I mean, I watched on G4 when that was a thing, and I just think it's going to be a good year for it. Are there going to be Scorpio stuff? Yeah. Am I happy for that? Eh. Just because I do have an Xbox and a PC. I don't play many games that I show the channel, at least on the Xbox, besides like Ghost Recon, I do play some Smite, some other games in there. But I guess we'll just see how it goes. Another thing I kind of want to talk about would be one-step matchmaking. Now, I have not played Rainbow Six since Operation Health launched. I think I probably stopped a week before it happened. So that final Velvet Shell ranked game that I put out two days ago, it was basically a week before Operation Health launched. Now, I did play two games right as Operation Health launched, and one game, 10 minutes, you know, whatever, I can say in 10 minutes, one of them was 40 minutes, and basically after that, I just said, fuck it, I'll wait until they did the ones that met me. Now, as you guys know, if you do follow along with the patch notes, the PC did get the patch, I believe on the 6th or the 7th, console, it is still coming, so I'll be getting back into that. This gameplay, as you see, was done with the once the match matching, which was so quick. I think it was like 30-ish seconds. Now I know this is casual, but I hope that it goes over to ranked as well when I start getting back into that. Also, going off the ranked tangent, um, Velvet Shell, I didn't show it, but I did finish at Silver 1. Now on Xbox, I did rank myself before I really started playing on the PC, and that I believe was either Gold 3 or Gold 4, so equally as good or bad depending on how you take it, which is not a bad thing, so yeah, that's a good thing. Um, I think I'm going to put out more videos than just I believe it was like the 11 I had for the first season for Operation Health, now that the once the matchmaking is in. I think I'm going to probably shoot for about 20 or 30, maybe a little more, for the number of episodes that I put out. Now, I may play more ranked games than that that I'm going to show, but obviously I will do my first 10 warm-ups, or uh, what are they called? You know, the, the requirements for getting ranked, the 10, whatever, I can't think about it now, but those 10 games I'll definitely show. And then I may just sputter in some other ones. It's a good idea. You guys will like it, hopefully. And the loot pack system. I want to get to that because I know I, you guys probably saw if you're in a Rainbow Six Siege community or, you know, you're just browsing YouTube, the loot pack system. Now, I, this is just a mixed bag, I think. Only reason I'm saying this is because of one skin, which is that black eye skin from season one. Now I saw a couple people up and I think I was at a Thommy or Tommy or whoever you say his name and somebody else. They had gotten a black eye skin. I know it was on the test server, but that skin not many people got it and I just don't think it's right now. I know they're in their right to put anything in these loot packs. But I think for most of the season one, two, three, four and then year two to season one, I don't think they should put the weapon skins and or the headgears or the vests or however. I just think those should be 
you know, like time differences. So the golden chibis, any of the chibis, that I'm fine with those just because those are S. I mean, they're both aesthetic, but those I feel are a lot, a lot less, you know, valuable kind of in air quotes. I'm thinking just because people wanted the exclusivity of the uh, black ice weapon skins or the. I don't know, Monty bundles that I have, like those things. Like I paid for those and I kind of like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. This is a limited time thing. I the black eye stuff, I kinda looked at them like, oh it's kinda cool, but at the time I don't think I played any operators and just for like Twitch views and I think two others. I don't know, I just it's weird because they said it's time exclusive and you know they're in their right they're in their right to do put whatever in the hell they want in the packs but I just that's the one sticking point for these loot packs something else I kind of want to talk about is some like operator slash like ideas for weapons in Rainbow Six with the secondaries I mean the secondaries I feel like because you, you know your machine pistols so your SMG 11 and you are bearing 19, you can have sights on those, obviously not the ACOG, like low magnification sights, so you have like put an ACOG or a reflex sight, or not an ACOG, a holographic or a you know red dot sight, you can put those on there. I think they should probably move those over instead of putting them in the pistol category. Just because I feel like the iron sights on most of the pistols are just bulky and they just get in the way of shot and Long behold, your sight covers their head, so you either are going to get lucky, or you're like, oh, I'm on target because I can't see their head. Like an SMG 11 or a bearing 9, I know that that little green triangle and or the little holographic sight reticle will be right there, because I can see that. I can see that I'm there. I'm not blocked by the stand of the bottom of the iron sight. Or I'm not blocked by the corner of it if I'm looking to see if there's somebody off in the corner. But I guess there is some problems with that. Then you got people with pistol snipe not using their actual like close range weapon. You might see more shotgun use because if you're like using thermite or whatever and you don't want to bring a pistol, you like bringing your pistol but you also a shotgun, then you could, you know, bring a shotgun and then a pistol with a nice like low sight like one times even if that even if it's just a no magnification sight whatsoever I think that would be nice I mean to be completely honest it's just a mixed bag because you bring smoke smoke you run a shotgun open up a wall because you have an SMG 11 sledge the shotgun on him viable is it my favorite thing to run with him uh, depends on the map if it's a close quarters map yeah if it's like cafe sure because you have the narrow stairwells and then you have the long open like bar area red stairs uh red carpeted area and it's just more versatile i think that would make everybody more versatile i guess another thing i can ramble on about would be now that the changes have been come with the ones that matchmaking and the Laz nerf thing. They put, they took the smokes from Thermite Nash, gave them stun grenades, and then swapped them onto Jackal and another attacking operator who I can't think of on the top of my head. Jackal, great idea. Because you now you have to choose between something as powerful as preaching rounds, or you have to bring smokes for glass. Now, I know he's got a shotgun and it could potentially open up holes, but you're not going to get through a wall quick enough unless somebody's already grenaded it. Is it a good nerf to Glaz? Yes. Are you going to nerf Ash and Thurman in the process? Maybe? I mean, only time will tell with the stats that Ubisoft is going to, you know, look at the back end or whatever. But, I don't know. I think it's just interesting. Because I think this is the first time they've actually nerfed an operator by taking some away from another operator. Because I know, like, if I'm not mistaken, when the game first came out, Thermite had breaching charges. 
and or stun grenades and then they gave him normal grenades took away the breaching charges and then they gave him claymores and then like stun grenade or a smoke grenade and then they gave him smokes and they took those away and gave him stuns because I know if you do play the first not the first one of the situations he has grenades if I'm correct I mean that's just a roller coaster but Last still has his smoke grenades, so I guess it's kind of nice, but then you have Monty who's got smoke grenades. Uh, the two operators, they took them from, they gave, they gave smoke grenades from uh, Ash, Thermite to Jackal, and somebody else. Is it a nerf to Glass? Yeah. Have I seen in the games that I've played, the few, like, one or two games that I've played, have I seen less Glass? No, but now at least you know he's coming, so it's not like you have three or four people on your team that have a smoke grenade. And you can just chuck them, and it's like, it's like, ah, well, I don't know. Peek, don't peek, and all of a sudden you have an ash or somebody run around the corner, pop you in the face. It'll be nice. Let's see. I mean, I think that's all I can think of. Like I said in the beginning, if you guys want to have me ramble on about something in the future, you guys can go ahead, just leave me a comment on the video, send me a Twitter message, send me a DM, do all that fun stuff. But remember, subscribe. All that nice stuff to help the community out. And remember, snitches get stitches.